Great. Um, so, yeah, I'm Susie Dye. I'm Grants Manager at Trust for London. And uh, my colleagues, uh, Abbas and uh, Laura uh, from Trust for London, are also online uh, assisting uh, with um, ensuring uh, that the tech is, is working and uh, keeping an eye on, on people with, with, with hands up and, and, and questions and so on. If you do have any uh, tech issues, um, if you can somehow flag that up uh, and uh, Laura will uh, contact you uh, via, via email to, 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 to try and sort that out. Okay. Um, the, um, I'm sure we're all familiar with this uh, today, um, but uh, just uh, as, as a sort of um, a bit piece of hygiene. So the first thing to say is that um, we are gonna be using, with, with potentially so many people joining, uh, we will be using a Jamboard um, to uh, support uh, discussion. Uh, I've I just pasted that into the link and that was also in your joining instructions uh, email um, for today. Uh, so do feel free uh, as the meeting's going on uh, to uh, go on there and introduce yourself. In terms of making the, the meeting work for everyone, uh, please do mute yourself if you're not speaking. Uh, put your hands up, um, ha hand up either using the, the reactions button or physically put your hands up if, if you'd like to speak. Uh, and uh, if I can ask a relatively limited amount of backwards and, and, and forth, uh, that would be uh, much appreciated. And as I say, we will uh, record, um, sorry, we are recording the meeting. Um, Laura, you had another really good um, piece of advice and I, I admit I've, I've forgotten it can, can you remind me what it was oh no now I've forgotten <laughs> never mind all right but, um, we'll, we'll make it work as, as, as we go along and oh, it was about changing your name if, if um, oh. that's right so if your name isn't obvious uh, in terms of um, looks like most have yeah and, and and thank you those um everyone who's done that if, if that could be um, ideally first name and, 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 and last name, but, but certainly your name would be much appreciated. Okay. Uh, so, all right, uh, let's get started. The plan for today um, is I'm going to start with um, uh, a, a sort of quick overview and, and presentation of, of the initiative. Um, and that will be um, up, 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 up to about 20 minutes. We'll then have um, 20 minutes of initial questions. Um, we are then, as I say, going to take advantage of, of having so many of you uh, with an interest in, in the uh, issue uh, in the room and, and go into breakout groups for, for a chance for you to um, sort of uh, talk to each other. Um, we'll do a, a brief bit of feedback from that. Then um, there'll be a second sort of short presentation, particularly focused on the detail of the grants programme and, um, and, and take further questions uh, based on that. Um, and Sorry, Susie, yep. can I just interrupt? Um, just someone's raised that they think the jam board has been set to view only. So if you could grant access. Uh, yeah, I most certainly can. Thank you. And uh, apologies for that. All right. Um, and then the, uh, yeah, then we'll finish with, with uh, next steps. And, uh, and apologies for, for that about the jam board. I will do that just as soon as I am in. Right. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Right. Um, I'm going to keep presenting, and then when it comes to the the, the questions I, and, and apologies, I've, I've, I'm fairly new to, to Jamboard, so I've, I've, I've clearly had a bit of a fail uh, there in terms of uh, making that work. Um, but we'll get that up and running later in later in the session. Okay. Um, so um, I'm wearing multiple hats today, as you can kind of see, uh, with colleagues very, very ably supporting in the, in the background. Okay. Uh, first thing, and um, um, without wishing to belabor the point, um, just um, to show you uh, the list of some of the organisations that have signed up for today, uh, and, and the range uh, there in terms of uh, homelessness or um, organisations working with homeless people, let me get the, the language right, uh, law centres, some BME organisations and um, also some um, uh, working with, with in, in, in sort of more specialist ways and, and, and with, with different stakeholders, so uh, welcome. Uh, 
the background to the initiative. So um, under the um, so Trust for London uh, devised its, its current funding priorities, including the Good Homes and Neighbourhoods priority, uh, and has been making grants under that uh, since uh, 2017. That included a focus on the private rented sector. Uh, and uh, we had at that point an awareness that uh, temporary accommodation presented uh, specific uh, challenges, both in terms of people's um, roots and ability uh, to um, you know, have agency in, in terms of that accommodation, uh, but also in terms of the, the standards and, and uh, what the, the effect that, that, some, that, that some of that accommodation was having. Um, through that, um, we made some great grants. We're, we're really proud of, of uh, the work that uh, a number of grantees have been, been doing. Uh, we were aware also that uh, it was affecting a much wider group, but they weren't necessarily uh, having the time or resource uh, to, to focus on it. Uh, as an issue. Uh, so with, with that in mind, and, and, and we had been funded uh, in our PRS work by the Oak Foundation, we commissioned uh, research from uh, Lila Baker and, and, and Mary Carter uh, to look at how we as funders uh, could um, assist organisations who were supporting and, and seeking to achieve uh, change for and with London's MTA to ultimately uh, improve um, how it was being used. It's worth saying, uh, Lila and Mary are, are online with us today. They are here in their own capacity. Uh, will in case you want to present the research. So uh, anything I say that isn't in line with um, every, you know, all the wonderful input you guys have, uh, have given to them, uh, we take responsibility uh, for that and, and, and um, are, are in charge of answering questions today. Um, but so it, it, yeah, it, it, it's great to see so many of you who, who did contribute to that research as well as those who um, we're having first contact with today. Um, the, the re that research uh, last summer found that organisations were working with a, a lack of uh, resources and, and can be isolated, not least due to the pressure of, um, that, and, uh, of that work and, and complexity of it, and um, it recommended a, a mix of uh, grant funding, but also connecting and supporting uh, organisations to develop and um, potentially some uh, new organisations to, to emerge. Uh, as well. So um, we were uh, delighted to secure um, funding from Oak Foundation, which um, you know, increases our own resources as, as Trust for London to be able to devote for this. Um, and, and hence, um, uh, this month have, have launched this uh, three year uh, initiative, which will be uh, it, this is the London component uh, where we hope that. Um, Oak, well, we know that Oak are uh, exploring, developing a, a potentially slightly larger national piece of work uh, that we hope will, will complement um, the, the work that, that, that we, uh, but the, that um, um, organisations will, will be developing in London. Right. Okay. Um, uh, and, and yes, uh, noting in the chat, yes, apologies, the Jamboard is currently view only. I'm going to uh, go and have a dig around in settings as soon as I get a chance. It's, um, that, that's my fault. And I apologize those who are having difficulties getting into that. Right. Um, just uh, the, the headlines of the initiative before we go to questions. So the, the aims are to strengthen the voice connections and influence of Londoners living in, in temporary accommodation uh, with the goal being ultimately to improve people's experience of TA. Uh, one of the ways in which I think about this is that uh, the uh, in all the people in, in TA, it's, a, a, it's about 80,000 families, isn't it? That's, that's the size of either a medium sized um, parliamentary constituency or a decent sized local authority area. Uh, and yet these are, are people who have been largely invisible in terms of policy making. Uh, for, for too long and, it, it, um, and, and our hope is that by, by increasing, um, strengthening the, the infrastructure and increasing their, their, their um, visibility and, and uh, access to support, that that would uh, no longer be, in, be the case so that stays in, in TA would be uh, what they're supposed to be, sort of temporary, short, healthy, safe. Um, we call this our working vision. We, we hope that um, components of, of the initiative will be, become owned uh, by the organisations uh, in, involved as, uh, as, as we go along. Um, our objectives are to work to strengthen the voice of Londoners with experience of TA and the organisations working with them, and particularly at the local and London levels. Um, 
and uh, to build the capacity of organisations working to create change with and for Londoners uh, living in temporary accommodation and to strengthen and improve access to support. Um, there are three components to the initiative. So when we talk about that figure 1.5 million, that is the whole envelope uh, of uh, the initiative. So that includes the grants, the uh, networking development support and the training uh, and, and support com components of it. Um, the, uh, in terms of um, how much will be given out um, across um, the, the funding, um, there will be exactly two thirds. Uh, and obviously not all of that in, in phase one, we are holding some back um, to um, acknowledge that um, we will be learning as we go along and, and, and there will be uh, things that will emerge within three years that we hope we might be able to devote uh, some money to later down the line. Um, but yes, yeah, so grants, networking development support and training support. Um, on a little more detail now on, on, on the funding. So um, we are now open for applications for uh, grants to organisations working for change with and for people with experience of TA. We included some examples of the types of work that that might be. Um, and um, it, it's important to note that we won't be making an enormous number of grants uh, in phase one, so six to 10 grants um at, at, at this stage um part of that is um because of the feedback that we received that um people wanted to have a decent amount you know, those who were applying for staff resource they, they wanted that to be a decent amount of staff resource uh, as well as um being able to fund some of the support uh, and, and wrap around uh, that, that, that would be needed and or participation costs. Um, so, so hence the, um, we talked about large grants up to 150K. Uh, we'd like to fund some small, uh, smaller or, or grassroots organisations um, as well. So smaller grants there. Um, and we have, it, it's worth saying, we'll, we'll publish some FAQs after today. We've had um, at least one conversation with an organisation that's planning to do really strategic multi-borough work. Uh, and so they will potentially be applying for, for more than that 150K. Um, we can't make, you know, we may be able to make one of those grants, um, but, but uh, the, the vast majority of the grants that we, we, we make uh, will be under you know, 150K or, or under, and some of them will be at, um, at that smaller end as well. Um, and I hope I've not confused you there, but if you, if you bear in mind that, that rule of thumb of 150 and 30, that, that would be helpful. Um, and then the micro grants, again, this was something that um, the research told us was needed um, for um, it, 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 unincorporated groups, whether they're working at block level, whether they're, they're um, you know, just constituted but haven't set up sort of for, you know, very formal governance or organisations, um, that uh, these would, would enable funding for you know, an event or um, you know, a laptop or something like that. Um, we are we're not open for that yet. Uh, and that's partly um, because of wanting to in involve organisations in, in how exactly to do that. Uh, and also, um, I mean, one way of doing that might be to commission a partner. So um, we're, that's not open yet, but we know it's needed and, and, and we are committed to doing that. Right. Uh, the networking and development support is, is a really crucial uh, component of this. And again, we are open for applications uh, for potential partners uh, for this now. Um, this is to uh, connect organisations uh, with each other uh, so that um, that's partly about involving with, with the initiative um, and, and, and developing uh, that. But it's particularly about um, supporting people to work um, with each other um, to uh, both do that, that kind of influencing. Um, I use the word advocacy a lot, but, but we understand that, that that's um, sort of the policy um, connecting work, but also connecting people up to support. Um, and uh, the, we hope that that networking development support will, will be wider than just funded organisations. Um, we know that there are a lot of organisations doing great work uh, who are, are interested um, and keen to learn. Uh, uh, well, I think that, that um, um, 
I, I, I think I talked to one or two organizations and, and they're just really excited to hear that something's working uh, and that gives them hope in, in, in what is otherwise very, very challenging uh, day to, to day, day to day work. And, and then also we, uh, we do tend to hear about opportunities where there's a, a policy forum or something that, and they want to hear from people with lived experience or organizations doing work. So we hope the networking will assist with that. Um, uh, wouldn't it be great if FTA is in the news in a year or two's time, that organisations are connected with each other, that there are some shared messages, that there are, you know, uh, you know some shared priorities that mean that when opportunities come up, uh, that organisations are working together and, and, and there's some infrastructure that, that means that, that um, we've got some go-tos. Um, in, in, you know, in, in London uh, to uh, support that kind of work. So um, that's, that's one of the ways, one of the potential outcomes, if, if you like. Right, um, training support. We are committed. Um, we heard, um, particularly in, in this most recent phase of um, conversations with the sector, that legal education was a really important area of um, support that was needed right now. Uh, so we are committed to commissioning that. Um, we, I know there's a lot of law centres who do that kind of work on, on, on this call. Um, we will probably have a, a, um, a follow up something to explore how, how, how exactly to do that. But, but we do want to do that soon. Um, and then, yeah, there's, there's potential resource around uh, capacity building, grants plus support. Um, and uh, we are also committed to having a, a sort of critical friend. Uh, type role to support the development of the initiative so um yeah there, there's funding it's not just funding uh, and we hope that that's something that we will as trustful and then be offering to uh the sector in terms of uh, build, building up this area of work um right um Gosh, it's funny talking to a screen with my presentation, not being able to see your faces, but um, I, I hope uh, we'll, we'll get you uh, talking in a moment. Yeah, Trustful and our role is to amplify and provide uh, comms and, and, and admin support um, so that the spaces that we're in, we're, as much as possible, we, we make people aware of, of the work that you're doing. Right. OK, let's pause there. And um, let's start uh, collecting a few questions while I go in and, and also try and get the Jamboard working. Um, so if people can uh, put up your hands, I'm going to come out of the presentation for a minute, if I can bring it out. That means I can see your faces. OK. Okay, James Badley, um, you've got your hand. I'm going to take three at a time, if that's all right. Okay. Any other questions? Any other people wanting to ask questions at this point? Uh, yeah, Jackie and um, so um, is it Emma from Medical Justice? Okay, so we'll go James, Jackie, Emma, um, and yeah, James, do you want to go first? Yeah, I mean, basically, uh, I, I work for an organisation uh, that, that focuses on supporting uh, refugees and asylum seekers um, until for, for a long time, lot, it was, it's mainly been Afghan refugees with the Afghan and Central Asian Association in Felton. Uh, but we, we, we're gradually uh, widening the uh, range of different migrant groups and refugees and asylum seekers we support. Uh, we're, we're supporting a lot of, of refugees in, uh, in long, well, they're, they're, they're in long stay hotel placements at the moment while they wait resettlement. Um, and I, I wanted to know if you can apply for funding from this fund to, to work with quite defined groups or whether it needs to be fairly broad. Yeah. Okay. And, and if it is, if, if, if you can apply for working with quite defined groups, what the sort of parameters of that are, would it be Afghan refugees? Would it be refugees in general? Um, or would it be, I'm afraid we'd need something broader than that. You'd have to work with, you know, a wider range of client groups. So that's, that's my sort of key question. 
Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, so, um, can you know, the group that you're working with is Afghan refugees in the hotels? Uh, would this fund um, be uh, suitable for you know that that quite sort of uh, defined uh, defined group? Yeah. Although, although, although increasingly we we found that in the last couple of years anyway, we're working with a broader range of of refugees, and just naturally because. You know the work that we're doing is uh, is relevant to other groups, and we're we 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 you know as inclusive as we can be. And we've recently uh, been been trying to emulate what we did when the Afghan arrivals came in August and and and, and September onwards to um, uh, for Ukrainian arrivals as well, and trying to prepare ourselves to provide some support there because we feel our model uh, has been has been you know has worked well uh okay, so, so, so we can see we can see a lot of synergies with uh with with with, with our model but yep. there's obviously a limit well potentially a limit to okay, our reach yes, in the nicest possible way i'm going to cut you off if yeah, yeah. that's all right um, are you answering that now or, or um well I'm, I'm taking three questions at a time right. so yeah jackie oh you're on mute jackie I was just pressing the space bar, it didn't work. Um, I, it, it may be too early to say at the moment, I'm not quite sure to ask, but um, we, in, in looking at how we would frame our bill and particularly trying to stretch the budget, um, in, we, we also obviously realise the importance of, of legal education and particularly at the level that the families are in temporary accommodation can understand their rights and be assisted to exercise them um, and I'm not clear yet whether part of the additional training and networking and support would mean that we would be able to access some training facilities or whether we need to build that into our own application our own budgets for the project. Now I'm now I'm on mute. Can you repeat that? So you're, you're wanting to do legal education for residents in, in in TA, and the question is, can you build in uh, funding for that into your budget? Is, is, is that the, is that the question? Have I? Understood? Sorry, yeah, it was a bit garbled. Um, I really want to know whether we need to do that or whether we could rely on a specific project being funded for that or, or Trust for London itself funding, you know, particularly commissioning that kind of, you know, a, a training course as a recorded seminar or whatever. Yeah, good question. We need, you know, in, in other words, whether each application, each applicant needs to build in that training to their own budget. Yeah, it's a really good question, Jackie, thank you. All right, and then uh, Emma from Medical Justice. Hi, my question is slightly similar to James's in that um, I want to know whether we would be able to apply to campaign against um, accommodation centres that you may have seen that have been recently announced by the Home Office for um, asylum seekers that are very gruesome, more like quasi-detention. Um, we want to campaign against them and failing that, and if they do get set up, assist the people inside them um, and we're not quite sure where they're all going to be at the moment. We're based in London and the accommodation centres may be in London or, or, or may be outside. And um, as and when and if we manage to stop um, one of these grisly accommodation centres being set up, another one may appear somewhere um, else later. So it's going to be a bit of a game of whack-a-mole. Um, and lastly, uh, we've already very kindly got a grant from Trust for London for our more mainstream core costs that we already do. And this is a slightly um, distinct project. So I was just wondering whether that would fit into, um, into your profile as it were. Great, thank you. Okay, so those are um, three great questions. Um, so, um, the, 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 the first one in terms of uh, quite defined uh, groups, um, 
we'll go into the, the shortlisting criteria um, later. Um, one of the things that we're going to be looking at is um, as we, as we, and, and, and I may call on, on, on colleagues to, to assist me a little bit with this, um, as we look at across the uh, groups that, that, that are you know, shortlisted, um, the potential there is for um, organizations who are funded to learn from each other. Um, so is there read across from you know, um, Afghan refugees in hotels to the situation of, of, of people who are being placed in, um, you know, in, uh, being placed in, in the PRS by a, a local authority or, or by the Home Office or, or, or whoever? And so um, it, the, honest, it, the honest answer is I'm not sure. Um, it might not be at the top of the list. But, it, but it's not a definite no, and that's because we've deliberately had that uh, broad definition, um, recognising that there are some similarities in terms of people's rights and circumstances and their ability to get out of them. Um, so that yeah, I'm, I'm just going to check in and, and, and see if, for example, Abbas wanted to uh, add anything to that. No, thanks for that. I, I think if you can make a case for it, I mean, one of the things that we want our services to be accessible by people in need. Uh, we want to encourage uh, use of services by diverse group of people instead of a single community. But if you can make a case of it, of the model, as you said, uh, James, uh, which may be applicable to other groups, then yeah. there may be a scope. I mean, I think our, our feeling anyway is that we would, we would be looking to put something together that was more uh, aimed at general refugees in general uh in in london rather than just afghan refugees but obviously using our experience of afghan refugees so i think i yeah, think that would, be our, that would be our preference yeah thank you that that that's helpful and and yeah we i'll, I'll, I'll repeat this more times than i'd like but also um re reminding people we're not making a massive number of grants yeah so yeah um jackie your point about legal education it, it's a really good point because um um the way that I've thought about the, the specifically commission legal education and um, Lila, I'm looking at you and I can't call on you. So like, but the way I've understood that is that that is support to other organizations. Um, so that, you know, the, the, the grassroots groups, the ones who are doing the frontline work, um, that, that, that that's what we'll particularly commission. Um, and, that isn't to exclude individuals um, or, or champions or, or, or whatever from accessing that. You know, certainly we've, we've had that experience when, when we've funded, for example, Law for Life in the past. Um, and, you know, their videos are on YouTube and, and they've, they've got a lot of hits. Um, if that is really central to your model of change, though, Jackie, then, then I'm not against you, you know, a, 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 a applying for that. I guess I, um, I'm going to pause there again. Um, would anyone like to add anything or shall I move on to the next one? Okay, people are keeping quiet and, and that's um, that I hope means that I'm on, um, on the right track there. Uh, Emma from Medical Justice, thank you for your question. Um, my gut reaction is that asylum and accommodation centres, um, while obviously really important uh, to campaign against, it doesn't feel central. Uh, to, to this initiative, just in terms of being a, a really different type of thing. Um, but again, I'm not a refugee specialist. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, that it, it's an area that um, I, 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 I don't know um, as much about as I, I do about you know the private rented sector as a, as about you know some of the, the commissioned accommodation. Um, so I'm, my, my gut reaction is that that wouldn't necessarily be at the top of the list. Um, uh, but you can apply for this funding if you have an existing Trust for London uh, grant. By the way, and if we're saying it's not at the top of the list, it's not that we don't care about it. it it's it's just um, in terms of the conversations we've been having for with people for uh, today about where we, we where we know there's a really big need. That, that's not being met um in terms that, of yeah you know. that's totally fair enough thank you very much it was a bit of a long shot i wanted to um just to ask in case and i i don't want to wrap up anyone's resources or, or time so we probably wouldn't make an application then but thanks so much i appreciate you joining us today thank you thanks. so um sarah uh, let's take a, another three questions so sarah from cardinal hume you've uh, very patiently had your hand up uh, anyone else have questions that they want to ask
uh, Lee uh, from Change Communication. And uh, one more. Uh, Janie from uh, Unseen Tours, I hope. Um, okay. Uh, Sarah, go ahead. Okay, thanks. Um, it's again, it's about the, le the legal question. Are you looking at um, providing legal advice or is it um, that you want to, to, um, to increase people's understanding of the education? So if we wanted to employ a legal professional, is that something that you'd be interested in supporting? Or do you want us to actually be empowering people to sort of deal with these things themselves? Uh, it's a good question. Um, so we're, um, we're open to different models of doing this. Um, we know that using the law is one of the ways in, in which people get change. Um, we, uh, don't want to only fund legal advice. Um, we want to see um, some of those who are getting ad ad advice being brought together uh, to, um, you know, to then you know, seek to actually change the policies that they're constantly having to challenge, or to, you know, um, work with others and, and, and you know, the, re the research on, on what those findings are, and then that research being taken mm -hmm. to the decision makers and, and, and so on. So, um, I can imagine we will end up funding some legal advice. Um, I can't imagine us fund making six grants, you know, which are primarily about legal advice. We, we want to see some different, um, that point about the learning, if you like, we want to see different approaches. Mm, um, okay. Yeah. Okay, all right, thank you very and much. Particularly, um, I guess, um, yeah, I, 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 if your organization's core strength, in, because we'll look at the, the strengths and, and, and capacity of the organization as well, and the work it, that it's been doing with this, this, this group, um, and, and um, um, because we're willing to do core grants through this, um, there's a real opportunity for, their, for, for people to, um, you know, tell us what they're good at, uh, and then seek funding uh, to, you know, do ideally more of that. Does that make okay. sense? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, Lee. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm uh, Lee Andrews from Change Communication. We provide communication support to people experiencing homelessness. Um, it, it's very new what we're doing. There's a very, very limited evidence base for the level of communication needs amongst people who are homeless. Um, but we have a lot of practical experience of providing that support. So if we would submit a bid to um, this, this fund, we would want to have a, a sort of twin approach, um, part of which would be casework. So casework for us would mean communication assessments, because the casework and the communication assessments helps us build evidence of what change would be needed and what kind of support needs to be put in place. But I did notice from the documents I read yesterday that you don't seem too keen on, on casework, but I, I wasn't, because casework can mean different things to different organisations. Are you able to give any guidance on, on whether you would be open to that type of application. Uh, thank you, Lee. Um, great. And then uh, Jamie, I'll take your question next. Sure, thanks, Susie. Um, so just wondering whether this um, would be open to social enterprises as well as charitable organisations. Um, so we provide Londoners a chance to have training and meaningful work experience and a lot of them have experience of homelessness and temporary accommodation too. So just wondering if this would be something that we would fit into or it's not really something that you're looking for. Thank you. All right. So again, um, all great, great questions. And uh, I've, I've, I've realised that actually I, I answered Sarah straight away rather than taking three questions in a row. So um, Lee, your question about uh, casework. Um, and am I right in thinking that both the casework and the communications assessments are done with individuals? And, and, and I, I recall your work, because I think we, we, we spoke um, a, a, a little while back in terms of your work in Westminster. Um, so um, everything that we've heard tells us that you need to do work to support individuals in order for them to be then able to be involved in, in anything wider, okay? Uh, however, 
we don't want to only fund the work with individuals through this. If that, and that our theory of how change will happen is that it needs to be about you know connecting people up and sharing you know what the issues are and influencing and you know and campaigning and, and, and just all of that which if if we're only working with I'm oh, sorry if if the organizations we fund are only working with individuals then then that won't that that there's a risk that the, the, the need just keeps being generated if, if that makes sense so um so it's not that we're not willing to fund casework, but but I mean, at one point we were debating, do we need to ask for the majority of funding to be not casework? We haven't set any of those rules of thumb, but but you, you, you get the idea, um, okay? Uh, and then Janie, um, the um, social enterprise where you're working with uh, people and um, supporting them around uh, getting work experience and so on. I, I think I'd, I'd say the same thing. So it needs to be about change beyond, you know, beyond just the individual. So, um, you know, open to supporting people, um, you know, and in terms of um, them, them moving into work. Um, but, but it's important that, that it's a more than just that, that it is about getting, getting change and, and it's about um, whichever stakeholders it is that you're trying to influence, you know, make, is it employers, is it, you know um large organizations is it schools like you know um, who are not reflecting the needs of the, the this group that are living in ta and um, how does your work influence that as a really central component of, of, of what you're doing um the point about social enterprises so the trust is willing to fund non-charities uh, for kicks we look for there to be uh, at least three directors one of whom shouldn't be uh, on the payroll okay um, so if we're doing other influencing work, working with schools to raise awareness and change stereotypes and things like that, would that fit into the broader remit of some kind of campaigning work or is that still uh, right? It, it, it's a really interesting one because uh, you're then getting into the trust's approach to funding, which is that the trust has not tended to fund work during school hours with school uh, with school age children um and that's um i think partly because there are other funders that do that that's not really our niche if, if that makes sense um if on the other hand you will work um I, I don't want to say it for you, but but there may be some people who are, you know, I mean, medical justice work to influence GPs, you know, uh, and, and the health system. Uh, there are some organisations who work very closely with schools to, to get teachers campaigning. Do, do you know what I mean? It, it, it's that kind of level of like. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I'm not an expert in movement building, but how do we build something that's 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 bigger than, than each of our uh, organisations? OK. I'm going to pause there because it's time for us to uh, go into uh, breakout rooms and for you all to uh, meet each other. All right. Um, welcome back, everyone. Uh, so we're now going to do um, just a, a few minutes of, of, of feedback from that. So um, I am. Um, I'm going to call on each group in, in turn. There were, there, there were five groups. If you can just do um, a couple of points uh, briefly, um, and we'll, we'll just spend a, a couple of minutes hear, hearing. So uh, I, I was in I was in group one. Um, Pauline, Pauline, I'm going to cheat and, and, and pick on you if, if, if that's OK. Um, I'll try to keep it brief, but we were a mix of organizations. And I think two things kind of stood out. Um, one was there's already a lot of kind of collaboration going on in the sector so we were kind of wondering where to draw the the boundaries of our bids um do we go at it together do we do it independently and then work together once we're in the network um so that was kind of a, a question but then something quite productive that also came up was how we may collaborate kind of through this grant but also just in our day-to-day -day activities and um we already had some great examples about putting some of, some of the Citizens UK people on, on training from other organisations and vice versa. So very, very fruitful already. Thank you, Susie. Uh, thank you. Can I get a volunteer from group two, please? Um.
I've got to admit that I can't remember what group yeah, number we were in. The number wasn't an issue, so I, th I think if we go randomly, S S Susie. Yeah, okay, so who wants to go next? Let's do it that way. <laughs> uh, Morris from Rota. Hiya. Um, I'm, I'm not at all sure which group we were in, um, but I, I think I was nominated, so I'll... Um, so, so, so our conversation is similar, actually. We had, we had talks about how... Um, how we might work together or what the sort of range of this uh, bid might be. And some of the thinking was, you know, that, that we had a number of groups that, for instance, deal with uh, refugees. And so, so do we need to do something specific or do we need to find groups that are working in other areas and be more general? That was some of the conversation. Um, the other bits were, we spoke, spoke about, you know, race and, and uh, representation and, um, you know, especially in London, the massive over representation of, of BME communities within temporary accommodation, uh, uh, you know, and all the things we know, basically. So we had, had a bit of a chat about that. Um, but mainly it was, uh, you know, no, no one was really that solid on what they might bid for because everyone's sort of trying to work out the parameters of this. And yeah, whether it's a go alone thing or build a network, or build, you know, build a partnership thing. That, that's, that's, that's where we were. Great. Who wants to go next? Thank you. I think I think we were in group two, actually, um, Louis. So I'll just butt in. Um, so I think we also had the debate about single bids or partnership bids and size of partnership bids, whether they were local borough based or pan London based. So I think we had all of that discussion as well. And one of the practical things that came out of that one practical question was whether or not we organizations would be able to be part of one more than one bid so if there was a local partnership bid that wanted to be taken forward but potentially um, there was a, a pan london bid for both of those networks as well whether or not we'd be able to be part of both or whether or not choices um, would would need to be made um, what else did we talk about? Anybody else in group two? I'm obviously taking that as your feedback. Let's yeah, obviously more. nothing else. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then we've got two more groups to go. I'm happy to say something. I'm not botting in too much. Uh, yeah, so we had a very diverse group. So we had Zacchaeus, um, we had um, Unseen Walking Tours, which we all found absolutely fascinating. And that took us on to a discussion around walk and talk research and, thing, and things like that, probably getting a little bit off, off topic, but we actually thought that it's a very valuable way of getting me meaningful feedback from people. Um, we also had Layla in our group, so she was talking a bit about the research that she'd done and also that she's on the, I've written this down, but I've forgotten which panel, the London Housing Panel as well. So that was interesting. And then we had Rupesh, who, um, who was working for the London Community Land Trust, but is in the process of developing um, a kick around aggressive action to drive up the amount of temporary accommodation or, or, or sorry the the amount of livable space in London and he was telling us about um, the golf belt research and saying that um, that the, if you put all the golf the golf courses in London together then it would um, it would be the size of Brent they only need one and a half of those golf courses to solve the um, housing problem in London, which was very fasc fascinating. Then we were talking about tags, temporary accommodation action groups. And we were saying how useful it would be to have someone like Rupesh in the tags that are coming out with really innovative ideas that can be battered around by the people who have got the power to actually make these changes. So it was a really interesting discussion. You didn't appoint anyone to speak from our groups. I don't know whether James, Lee, uh, Jenny or Samantha, anyone wants to share the discussion we had? 
Sure. Um, it was very similar, I think, to what's already been touched on, which is very much around um, should we work in partnership? Is it something that, you know, those partnerships will be formed once successful? Um, and also a big conversation around how smaller organisations can really um, get in with some of the bigger organisations to form those partners. Um, how do we make that work? So there's a definite um, theme and, and, and question uh, there, isn't there? Uh, so I, I'll say to you guys what, what I said in, in, in group one. Um, so we are open to uh, partnership bids. Um, we won't prescribe to people where the boundaries of those should lie. Uh, as um, someone said, there is um, the possibility of, of, of those partner partnerships happening within, within the, the you know, framework of the grants. Uh, and there will be um, very quickly with this initiative, um, a, a, a need for organisations to, to, to deal with the fact that there will be partnerships between organisations where some have received grant money from us and some haven't. Uh, and, and that's going to be a fact of it. But you know, um, organisations who aren't um, funded uh, will be welcome to be uh, part of, of, of the networking. And, and, and uh, we hope to have access to the other um, uh, components of, of the initiative, um, you know, uh, what, what, whatever, you know, wh whether that's the training or if they're smaller organisations, the micro grants. Um, and, and, and in fact, one, one comment that's come through on the, the, the chat is um, that, um, I mean, we're agnostic about whether it's micro grants or whether it's um, part, part of the sort of um, funding plus, but um, if a funded organisation or, or, you know, or, or someone ca came to us wanting to um, you know, seek a small amount of funding once 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 phase one is out if you like uh, to do some um do some partnership development then that's a potential use of that that funding we haven't um we haven't set very tight boundaries uh, uh, around that yet um so so there's that um the other thing i i, I said in, in in group one is that it it, it may be worth you knowing um the bigger the grants we make, the fewer grants we'll make. Uh, so so um, the total phase one budget is in the order of £800,000. OK. Um, and, you know, I, I, I'm not going to sign that, you know, in, 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 in you know, um, in red ink on anything because we want to see what comes in. But it's in that sort of order of magnitude. Um, so that gives you an idea of, of the, you know, that's probably us, a, 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 a key constraint for us, if, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we, we won't prescribe to you um, how to do the partnership. Let me move on uh, to do a, the, the next level of detail of, of, of the presentation, if that's all right, because it's, it's bringing out some elements of the guidelines which you may have seen um, but are worth highlighting okay so hold on please okay i'm just going to flick through to the page we were on all right um so first thing just to just mention a, a few of the assumptions, some of which will be familiar to you. The first one is that point about the broad definition of TA uh, and that therefore, um, and that's needed, but it does mean that some of those those uh, boundaries can, can at times feel a little bit fuzzy. Um, the, um, uh, I was really glad of, of Maurice's point about uh, race uh, and uh, we, we know there are huge uh, injustices and inequality um, affecting this sector that some groups are overrepresented. We, we will seek to, we're seeking to be aware of that in, in terms of how we're running the initiative, in terms of the grants that we make, uh, and in terms of uh, the groups that we pull together to try, try and make sure that, um, that as, as far as possible, voices are present. Um, the, um, and yeah, and, and um, I mean, crumbs. Um, the, the, the first phase research just talked about people's experiences of, 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 of feeling of, you know, almost abused by their experience of the system so far. And we just really want to be sensitive to that. Um, there was um, someone very eloquently said, please don't ask people to sing for their supper. 
um, the, you know, in terms of you know, quid pro, it, it's inappropriate for us to for us to ask for quid pro quos uh, from people who are going through just really challenging per, personal circumstances um and and so it, likewise we know that the support and and the uh the working for change uh, you can't do one without the other and that it, i mean if it's a new area of work so and it's very challenging for, for frontline work so we will seek to be flexible and, and, and adaptive uh, as, as things go on we're also uh, asking people to to um in, include in their bids what you think some of the risks and challenges might be uh, as well we don't know all of them in advance obviously um and yeah um moving on um some examples of what we will and won't fund that that key point about core funding for organizations who are who are doing uh, this this work um and uh the support for people with lived experience to to speak out i've been so excited um as we've been um, doing the uh, conversations in, in the run-up to this to find actually that there are some groups of trained up advocates with lived experience of, of ta um i was at a appg yesterday where um there was a woman speaking who's now working for shelter uh, and i first met her when she was at the, uh, part of um um, a, a, an action group on temporary accommodation uh, that, that we had helped to get going. So it's it's exciting for me to see some people have already been doing this work. Some people are already trained up and, and becoming champions. So yeah, that's encouraging. Um, the uh, the casework plus uh, we've we've mentioned that and uh, yeah lo local groups which bring together the different stakeholders um, who have. Um, potential in this again um i don't want to talk about it too much it's just because it was this week um the um that was great to see some health stakeholders uh, as an example in the room right um we're not expecting to fund only work with individuals uh, we do want to know that whether they're funded within the partnership or not there are arrangements in place for for that support um and uh yeah as i say we will um we'll be seeking to make a grant around second tier uh, legal education uh, for organisations in, in, in the initiative. Uh, we, we don't fund statutory organisations costs and we, and we won't fund local authorities to do what they should be doing already. Um, I'm guessing those will generate some questions for which we'll have some time in a moment. Um, everyone's asking me really good questions, not all of which we thought about in advance, so I'm finding this really valuable. Right, um, shortlisting criteria, um, and, and these are in, in the guidelines, um, and, and the, this is the information we've got for ourselves. So uh, we're looking for that, that clear thread uh, from you know, the problem to your plan uh, to address it to uh, the difference it, it will make. Uh, we're looking for uh, work that will be accessible to people with a lot going on uh, and with a lot of barriers in, in, in their lives, um, um, whether that's language, whether that's mobility, you know, being moved around, whether that's working three jobs. Uh, and so you, you know, that there's some, some need for them to be able to access stuff, you know, at unconventional times or, or, or whatever that might be you'll know what access means in, in your circumstance and, and we're willing to um for people to include some of those costs of of access in their budget um we'll look at the involvement of people directly affected you know uh, um, in project design in um ideally in you know, some people with lived experience of um certainly being on low income in in the leadership and governments of, of your organization um and what we'll we'll look at the 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 mix of organizations um flipping briefly to the right because we will we do want to fund some some bme and minoritized led uh, organizations through this uh, initiative looking at um organizations track record um, forgive me i'm reading off the slide um commitment to participating in the network it, it, again uh sorry in the networking we we want organizations who want to work together and, and, and learn from each other uh, and um safeguarding uh, risk is obviously a, a, a key point but people's understanding of that and yeah looking for a, a to fund a mix so that there is um two things number one that we hope that that will increase the potential for learning i think the other one is that it, to the extent that we're hoping to have policy influence um that that will enable um the initiative to 
say that it's not just one very specific thing, but actually that you know that different approaches, but also different types of organisations in different places, both seeing common problems, but also seeing solutions that that, that we can then talk to decisions uh, decision makers about. Um, I'm going to keep moving. Um, right. Let's pause there and let's take some more questions. I'm going to stop sharing screen again. Right, and let's take, uh, I'll take two questions at a time this time. You can put your hands up. Uh, okay, you can see Claire's hand is up. So, uh, my so yeah. mine was just um, what I referred to in the feedback, really, whether or not organisations potentially will be allowed to be in more than one bid. Yeah, thank you. And, and apologies, I haven't addressed that already. Uh, so you can't lead more than one bid. Okay. Um, I, I, and I, we, we hope that uh, bids will come in and, and, and mention partners. Obviously, if you're mentioning partners in your bid, make sure they know about it. Um, <laughs> Like, I've, I've been a fundraiser. I know what it's like doing the deadlines, but please make sure they know that they know that you're in your in, in the bid. Um, I, are organisations likely to be funded in more than one bid? I don't know. Let's see what comes in. Uh, next question. Have I really answered all of your questions? I find that hard to believe. The guidance was too good, Susie. <laughs> I've confused you all. You're trying to get your head around it. <laughs> Morris, your hands up. Hi, uh, uh, yeah, just on the on the um, policy sort of development side of things. Are, I do you um, do you have roots for? for disseminating this policy these these recommendations so i'm kind of thinking if at the end if, if at the end of the project we, we don't like to think of the end of the project being the produce production of the recommendations or the production of the policy the the end of the project is when someone actually does the things that that we've said otherwise it's just another so so i was wondering whether that's that's uh, where, where, uh, whether you had any um as as as, as trust for london had any uh roots to push this work out once once you have it yeah it's a it's a really good question so um i'll mention uh, a couple of things one is that there will be a link to the oak foundation at work presuming that gets going so we will feed the london stuff into the um in, into that in terms of the, you know, um if that turns out to be a, a sort of coalition or or, or or something like that that that's sort of parliament facing i think we would uh seek opportunities to ampl amplify it we we've got um and, and and london housing panel also have a decent relationship with, with london councils uh, and the london housing directors group um we um might seek an op op opportunity to present at the appg if that was appropriate you know um we would use our the opportunities we get um and uh, so obviously some of that will come through us the other one is to the extent that you're it's um lateral networks that when you guys get opportunities you amplify each other's yeah, um, I was speaking to an organisation we fund recently, uh, and they're a small organisation, and the, the, they said the way that they think about influencing is they're looking for voice carriers, sorry, message carriers. Uh, and so they build relationships with others who are willing and able to carry their messages. Uh, and if the organisations in this become message carriers for each other, wouldn't that be awesome? So, yeah. Got time for another question. All right, okay. Well, so it's worth saying people will think of stuff afterwards. Um, and so you're welcome. Um, 
two things that are going, are going to come out of today and I hope I'm not jumping the, the gun to my next slide but um, uh, one is that we will post the recording the other one is we've started to collect an FAQ um, for the initiative um, just trying to keep track of questions that people have been asking um, and, and, and making information as, as publicly available as we can uh, and so that will go up on, on the website and, and we'll um, I've demonstrated I'm, I'm not going to win awards for my tech capability today, but um, it, um, we will see, seek to make that up, up, updatable so that uh, as more questions uh, come in, we, we can share those with, with, with people as well. Um, right. OK, so in terms of what to expect next. You're going to see me flicking through my slides again. Ooh, one thing I didn't say before is um, we would like to share the emails of everyone who's who's been uh, today. Um, if you can privately message me if you don't want that to happen. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'd like that um, so that you can connect with each other. OK, right. Um, reflections so far. Um, yeah. This is a new area of work um, in, in terms of uh, we think we're the first to go public with a, a call for funding for this. Um, and so that means that uh, we're going to be learning uh, as, as we go along uh, and, and we hope people are up for learning uh, with, uh, from each other, too. Um, and we also hope that by building the networks and other support, that funding plus piece that will be a valuable contribution that Oak and, and, and Trust Fulham will be making to the sector. Uh, and so we hope that uh, organisations will be up for uh, staying involved. I, I mentioned in Group 1 um, through uh, Lila and Mary's fantastic work and, and everyone's willingness to be involved so far. We have already built a, a mailing list of about 90 people. Um, who have an interest in this kind of work uh, and they range from you know um, the head of legal at shelter right down to um, I think one group is basically two people in a Twitter account but both of those are really important so you know in terms of getting change we, we need all of that don't we uh, and, and so we and we also welcome your comments and feedback in terms of the role that the that, that trust for London is, is playing. Uh, next steps so um, there are um, the one-to-one -one bookable chats start tomorrow. Abbas is doing tomorrow. I'm doing Friday. There's another date. Uh, we, for those of you who are working with um, or, or are grassroots organisations um, who are trying to figure out whether to apply, we do still have a few slots there. Um, so if, if, please do in, in, uh, encourage and signpost those who uh, might find it helpful to, to have that kind of chat um, to those one-to-ones. Uh, -one. The link is on, our, on, on the initiative page. Uh, the deadline is the 17th of May, one o'clock. Um, interviews, uh, we will be interviewing um, so organisations that are new to the trust will try and visit. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'll, do, we'll probably do mostly online and then we'll seek to make decisions uh, late June. Um, and uh, um, as I say, and, and this is uh, both for the grants and for the, um, the proposals for the networking support. Um, and then the next big thing will be to, to get going on, on the legal, legal education and, and evaluation commissioning. Uh, and then soon after to figure out the micro grants because we know all of them are, are um, needed um, and uh, will be um, uh, will be valuable uh, for the sector we hope. Okay, um, let me stop sharing there. Any final points or questions? There's someone who has just entered the waiting room, who I presume is not for this meeting. But, um, does anyone have any fi final points or questions that they they, they want to make? All right. Uh, Mark, hand up. Super. OK. Thanks, Susie. Um, thank you for this. It's, it's been really helpful um, and, and definitely um, given us some ideas about what, what we might do if we were going to do this. Just wondered if is does um, either Trust for London or Oak have anything that they would point us to in, in terms of good practice that's out there, whether that's in terms of decision making, um 
about ensuring good quality temporary accommodation or um, or even just involvement in um, the involvement of people in decisions around this policy is is there is is there something that you think good looks like it, it, it's a good point and and actually it sort of came up a bit at the at the appg um as well on on monday that um so the, <laughs> I can mention a few things briefly that we've come across, but it, it, it's not it, it's not a fuller answer. And, and to some extent, I think the answer is kind of the knowledge in the room uh, uh, as well. So um, things that we're aware of are things like London Councils has done the work on setting the standards. Now, that's very much local authority. Uh, driven work, but it is about you know, raising standards that um, local authorities are willing to commission in, in terms of um, in terms of TA, in terms of um, involvement. I mean, I, I, I put some pictures of work that we'd been proud that, you know, uh, people had done I, in, in, in the um, in the um, guidelines. And that wasn't because they were they were the only good examples, but but, but because we wanted to show that the, the range of approaches and, and, and what, what some people were achieving in terms of building people up into champions, um, you know, um, getting wins from local authorities and, and, and that kind of uh, thing. Um, I'm, I'm gonna mention one just um, because we've been wanting to do a video blog on it and we, and we haven't yet, but um, Peach in East London, um, they um, were able to get, um, uh, they were able to get Newham to take the contract back in house uh, for, for maintenance. Uh, they were able then to get um, Newham not uh, to to maintain the priority level of those tenants and get them moved back locally, uh, so that they didn't lose uh, their local connection. And those uh, residents are now um, working with uh, the local authority on repairs. So they, I mean, it, they they they've got an advantage of having you know a concentrated resource in in one one area, and, and I'm, I'm a bit hesitant about having picked one example but um do you know what i mean that was really sustained concentrated organizing engagement that, that um has really skilled up those residents in, into leaders and, and achieved a lot uh, and there will be as many examples in this room i know there will so you know, if, if i haven't mentioned you it's not because i don't think you're doing good work um james you've got your hand up uh yeah it was just to ask um susie which um apbg you were talking about um uh, you might have just mentioned uh, APPG on temporary accommodation. So, There's a specific um, APG on temporary accommodation. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Just life and shared life are the secretariat, and it's shared by uh, sorry, chaired by Siobhan McDonough. Uh, if people are, are, are looking that one up. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, any any final points or, or questions? And uh, and to Mark's point about good practice. Um, if. Uh, maybe there's a case for setting up some sort of wiki or, or Google Doc or something so people can share um, examples with each other. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, or maybe that's something that we do through the initiative uh, once, once the networking and development support is, is up and running to, 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 to share those. I appreciate that doesn't help you write your bid, but um, it, let's get started. Right, okay. I'm going to do something I nearly never do and finish early. So uh, please do uh, follow up with um, you know, points or questions. We're really excited um, ab about this and really glad you've given us your time today. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll look forward to what comes in. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye.